grip knots on film and video sets. On set, the grips are the riggers, uh, and though they have a slew of heavy-duty steel equipment, they work uh, side by side with a very ancient yet important uh, tool, and that is ropes and knots. I'm gonna show you the most common knots uh, used on set by the grip department and other departments as well at times, but I'm also gonna show you how they work. This way, you'll be able to uh, easily remember how to tie them because you'll know how and why they work, particularly knots that are used behind the camera, not in front. You told me to find someone who's good with tying knots. She's good with tying knots. She's a dominatrix. Well, she's a grip now. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we give you the inside tips you need to make great video. One thing I love about film sets is that we use cutting edge digital technology cameras that uh, record megapixels that have a higher dynamic range than our own eyes alongside ancient technology that are thousands of years old, like knot time. Nets for fishing are just overhand knots tied together. Knitting is basically a big, one big, long, intricate knot. This is a simple overhand knot. One of the most common knots in the world. You've tied it a million times when you've tied your shoes. Here you see two nips, the point where the knot bites into the line below it when tightened. This point of maximum friction and pressure is where the work is done in a knot. Just paying attention to where the nips are will help you remember how to tie many knots and let you know when you're tying it correctly or incorrectly. Let's add another overhand knot on top of this one, but let's make sure each line exit the knot in the same direction as the line below it. The nips are now loops pulling on each other, making it a stronger knot. You've dealt with it whenever the bows in your shoelaces come through by accident. So hard to untie. This is called a square knot, which you've probably tied on packages and anywhere else where you're not sure what knot to tie. So, a shoelace knot is a square knot, but you're tying the top overhand knot with loops versus pulling the line all the way through. This creates what we call a quick release, allowing you to easily untie the square knot in your shoelaces time and again. You can use the same quick release method in some of the knots I'm gonna show you as well. The shoelace has two bows, and that's really just for appearances, for looks. But we here only need one. Whether you work on film sets or not, this is a knot you want to know, the clove hitch. It's used to tie a line to a cylinder when you don't want that line to move. It's a grip's go-to knot to tie to pipe, like the pipe frames of eight, 12, and 20 bys, so they can be tied off so they don't sail away in the wind. Make a loop around the pipe as if you were making an overhand knot, but don't go under the line. Go around the pipe again, then bring the line up on the other side of what we call the standing end of your line and go under the loop. It creates an X shape with two lines going under the loop. This means when you tighten it, two loops tighten around the pipe and the nip here digs into those two lines. This means under load, the clove hitch just gets tighter and digs into the pipe more. If you've ever seen a boat dock at a pier, you've seen someone take its line and loop it twice over the cleat. That's a clove hitch. That's a way to tie it over an, uh, the end of a pipe. Though it's tight, it's always a good idea to tie a safety, an extra overhand knot, just in case. Though it's a simple knot, it's so close to the overhand knot, it's easy to get it confused. So when you practice tying it, tie it upside down on a vertical pipe in various directions so you get the hang of remembering if you're looping it the right way. When done, look for the X. I bet you any amount of money you've heard of the bowline. It's the king of knots and I'll show you why. We've just seen that the clove hitch is great for a tight knot around pipe, even other rope. But what do you tie if you need a loose knot on a pipe that you can slide along the pipe, like a safety on a light that you know you're gonna need to move later? Or what do you tie to the grommet in a corner of an eight by or to the handle of a bucket so you can hoist gear up to scaffolding? The bowline. 
Why is it great? It's tight, but can be easily untied by pulling on its nips. Also, it minimally weakens the line. The bowline maintains 65 to 70% of a rope strength. Here's a quick and easy way to tie a bowline that helps you get the loop correct. Now watch this. If I cut the loop of the bowline so it's two pieces of line tied together and flip it over, it may look familiar to some of you as it's called by a different name, the sheet bend. Yep, the sheet bend, another common and useful knot used to tie two pieces of line together is just a bowline. So now that you know how to tie a bowline, use the same technique to tie the sheet bend. You're just using the two ends of the line instead of tying it in a loop. Now I didn't have to use a sheet bend very often on set, but when I did, it was a lifesaver. I'm trying to tie off a frame or a line to a light for a safety outside and it's too short and I'm under the gun. So I add a line using the sheet bend to extend it and now I can tie it off. You can even use it with lines of slightly different thicknesses. Everything we do on a film set is in relation to the frame, what we're filming. If it's out of the frame, we don't care about it. If it's in the frame, we really do care about it. And that means sometimes we need to get it to the just the right point in frame. The rolling hitch helps us hang items. Like the clove hitch, it tightens under load, but when not, it can be easily adjusted. Tying it in a single line creates an adjustable loop at the end for hanging objects in the frame, like I did with Pickle Rick. Why is this important? Because everything changes on set. The DP decides to raise the camera up or a light is moved and therefore what you hung in frame needs to be adjusted as well. All right, reframing the shot. It can also be tied to another rope or a pipe for the same purpose. Note the two loops of the knot are always on the side of the line in the direction of the load. The trucker's hitch is really a combination of a couple of knots. And when I first learned how to tie it, I freaked out, realizing how many uses it had in the real world where I was just using, you know, a square knot, like to lash things down to the top of a car. What you're doing is you're creating a block and tackle in the line that allows you to cinch down the object you're tying. You make a loop in the knot, here a slip knot. You take your line around the object you're lashing down to and then bring it back up and through the loop, creating the tackle. Here you tighten the load and then pinch at this point to hold it as you check the object you're tying down to make sure you've got it secure. Here you can loosen or tighten more. Then tie a simple overhand knot to secure it. Grips use this knot to tie down frames, 20 bys and whatnot, to sandbags or stakes or other heavy objects so they don't take off in the wind. Sometimes you need to tie off the corner of a piece of fabric or plastic that doesn't have a grommet in it. Here's a simple knot to do that, the strangle knot. It was used to tie off sacks and bags in the olden days. It looks like a messed up clove hitch because when you bring the line around, you bring it up on the same side, then go over and under. Thanks for watching. Hope that is helpful. Check out our other videos. We've done quite a few on grip, rigging, flags, nets, and fun stuff like that. One dash one.